All right, so welcome back to Time Out Thursdays. As you can see, we are on Zoom right now. So if you are on Facebook, on YouTube, or on YouTube, we encourage you to join us here in the Zoom. The meeting details are on the post and pinned in the comment section. So we'll be starting in a few minutes. See you guys in a bit. Once again, we welcome you back to Time Out Thursdays. As you can see, we are on Zoom right now. So if you're streaming from Facebook or YouTube, we invite you to join us here in the Zoom. Just hop in and the meeting details are on the post and posted in the comment sections as well. We hope to see you in a bit. All right, so welcome back to Time Out Thursdays. We'll be starting in two minutes. So if you're streaming from Facebook or YouTube, we invite you to join us here in Zoom. So hop in the Zoom room by joining the meeting details are posted in the uh, link or in the post or in the comment section. We hope to see you in a bit. Alright, just one more minute before we start with Time Out Thursdays. If you're streaming once again on Facebook or YouTube or you can tag your friends on the stream. But we encourage you to join us here on Zoom for a more personal time of prayer. The meeting details are on the post and in the comment section. See you guys in a bit.
All right, so welcome back to Time Out Thursdays, your weekly dose of promises. My name is Kuya Tij. I'm a campus missionary from UPD. So shout out to all the Iskos and Iskas tuning in and streaming from Facebook, from YouTube, and joining us here on Zoom. All right, so I'd like to give a quick shout out to all of those people joining us right now here on Facebook. We have Raleigh de Guzman, who just tagged one of her friends. Si JP Tribiano, who's actually also here on Zoom, shout out to you. Si Gladys, shout out to you also. Shelly Rin, thank you for tagging your friends. And just continue tagging your friends on the Facebook. Let me check on our YouTube stream, uh, who's here. Uh, I see si Lagua Marcy, shout out to you. Anton Clark, he says hello everyone. Hi to you, Anton Clark. And welcome, welcome to Time Out Thursdays, your weekly dose of promises. So once again, this is just an opportunity for us to take a pause, take a break, because we're in a world or we're living in a world where it's just so full of uncertainty, so full of fake news, it's so rampant. So tonight, let's unearth the certain and timeless truths that we can hold on to. We're going into another Time Out Thursdays and you're going to get another dose of God's weekly promises. So this is a place where we'd love to pray for all of you. And if you haven't noticed yet, we're here in the Zoom. So if you want a more personal time of prayer, if you want someone to pray for you one-on-one, just hop in here in the Zoom room. The meeting details can be found on the post and in the comment section. So without further ado, let me just introduce to you our very special speaker for tonight. Yeah, and we have a guest coming from Elevate Metro West. He is one of the campus missionaries in Elevate North Edsa. Let me welcome to you our Senor, Sir, Sir Dalaga, Luis Ocampo. What's up, Kuya Luis? Hello, hi, Paige. Yeah. Uh, everyone, young dude, sa Facebook and YouTube. Ah, uh, kamusta ka ba, Kuya Luis? Meron ka bang gustong is shout out? Shout out sa mga taga Elevate North Edsa, sa mga taga STI Munoz, and to everyone in Philippine Science High School, main campus. You know? <laughs> ah, grabe mga Pisay. Alright, thanks for joining us tonight, Kuya Luis. And bago tayo mag-proceed with our very exciting devotion, may gusto lang akong itanong sa'yo. And all of you streaming or here in the Zoom, you can also participate by answering the question I have for Kuya Luis. So, Kuya Luis... Dahil nga naninirahan tayo sa isang mundo, or we live in a world where there's so much uncertainty, that there's so much fake news going on, and even in the pandemic, it's so scary even to go out. My mm-hmm. question for you is, what's something you've been scared to do in this mm-hmm. pandemic? Grabe. Ano yung oh, kinakatakutan mo, Kuya Luis? <laughs> Siguro, uh, top of mind, one of the scared, not really scared, pero a bit worried and anxious when I go outside. Mm. Go to the grocery, go go to a nearby store. So uh, being too close to people in public, <laughs> yeah. Know, maybe we were not really scared of uh, mm. two years back. But sometimes it, it can get a, a bit anxious for me. And but it also comes not really about something that I do. Uh, I'm scared for people also who are getting sick. Mm. We're not feeling well. Sometimes when we get prayer requests from people who have headache or slight fever, sometimes na alarm agad yung mga ganong bagay. So I guess those are one of the things that are uh, quite uh, worrisome during the pandemic. Yeah, and yun yeah, I agree. There's so much to be scared of in this pandemic. Uh, you mentioned it's scary to be close to people right now kasi parang hindi mo alam if you can get infected, baka asymptomatic, baka masaktan ka lang kapag naging too close ka. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> joke lang. Pero I believe no, more than just the feeling of being scared. That's why we have our Time Out Thursday so that we can feel secure. We can be reminded of God's promises that will give us security and certainty for the future. So tonight, we can be unafraid to approach God. We can not be scared to approach God tonight. So to lead us in our devotion for tonight, I'll give the floor to Kuya Luis. God bless, brother. All right. Again. So as we start, no, uh, wherever you are, whether you're here on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube, I want you to comment in the chat or in the comment section, what do you think of when you hear the words strong and courageous? 
So I want you guys to comment. No, what do you think when you hear of the words strong and courageous? What comes to your mind when you hear these kinds of words? Uh, no, what also comes to your mind when you hear the word responsibility? Uh, so I want you to think of these three words: strong, courageous, and the word responsibility. I want you to comment it down to chat the comment section natin. And alam mo, I was, I was, as I was thinking about these words, about the words na strong, courageous, and responsibility, maybe it's not the best way to describe some of ourselves. Some of us are not strong. Some of us are not really courageous. Some of us are stressed out because of all the responsibilities that we are facing, especially during this pandemic. And especially during a time in the world where it Everything is ever changing. Something is always changing. And to top it all off, the burden of stress at home, responsibilities in school, maybe even conflicts in families, and many other things just continue to pile up. And we simply ask ourselves, Lord, what do I do? Or what else can I do? Is there any certainty that we will all ever be okay? I don't know about you, but maybe you've asked yourself a uh, question na yun, no? Lord, ano yung certainty that we will ever be okay? You know, there was a man in the Bible who was facing this big task. He was facing this big responsibility. And quite a transition that's going to happen in his life. And this man is named Joshua. And this is the verse that we will be focusing on tonight. It's in Joshua chapter 1. Verse nine. So before we continue, let's just say a quick word of prayer before we dive into our verse this evening. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts, you would open our minds as we read your word, as we uh, take time to sit down and really look at what it says. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us, and I pray, Lord, that you would give us a wonderful time of prayer and just encouragement as we. Read Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So here in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, this was God speaking to Joshua directly. And this is what God said to him. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you will go. I'm going to read that again. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What was going on here between God and Joshua? During this time, Joshua was given the task by the Lord to lead the Israelites into the promised land, to cross over the Jordan River, and finally, the Israelites would be able to be where God wants them to be, inside the promised land that God gave them. Joshua was given this task because Moses had already passed away. And I know some of us might be like Joshua. We might be facing a big transition in our life right now. Some of us had to step up when it comes to our family. Because of the pandemic, maybe your parents uh, had less income than before and you had to work to meet the needs of the family, to pay the monthly bills. Some of us are going into college, choosing what course to take, choosing which university to go to. Some of us are going into senior high, choosing what strand to take, choosing what school to go to. Some of us are graduating from college and you're facing a big transition in your life because you graduated during the online setup and maybe you're not sure if you're competent enough to have good work. Maybe you're not even sure that you're going to have work because of the pandemic. Right? Joshua was facing, was facing a very big transition in his life. He was going to take the place of Moses, the leader of the Israelites. And what was God's command to him? God said three things to Joshua. To be strong and courageous, to not be afraid, and to not be discouraged. And these commands were paired with a promise. And what was, the, what was God's promise to Joshua? That he will be with him wherever he will go. And there are also three things that I would like to share to us as we learn from the conversation of God with Joshua so that we too may be able to be confident that God will be with us, especially during these uncertain and ever-changing times. 
Okay? So first thing that we can do, and first thing that we can learn from what God was saying to Joshua is this. We are to recall God's faithfulness. During this conversation, Israel had gone through so much already. They have gone through so much already from their way out of Egypt into the promised land. And God has shown himself so faithful even if the Israelites were sinful, or even though they did not always listen to God, God was always merciful, kind, and faithful, and gracious to them. And during this conversation, God reminded Joshua that it was him, God himself, who gave the promise that they will enter the promised land. And that God will be the one to make a way for the promise to be fulfilled. So let me ask you today, how has God been faithful in your life? You see, with all the things going around us, with all the distractions that could enter our mind and in our heart, it's easy to forget how God has been so faithful to us, even just for the past month or for the past year. There are so many distractions that go inside our mind, inside our head, that our vision starts to be blurred and we forget na, oo nga pala, no, sobrang faithful ni God sa buhay ko. Ang dami ng ginawa ni God for me. So the first thing that we can do to be able to claim God's promise that He will be with us, is to always recall God's faithfulness. If God was faithful yesterday, if He was faithful last week, if He was faithful last year, there is no reason for Him to not be faithful today. That's the first thing we can do. We can recall God's faithfulness. Secondly, we are to actively obey God. If you would look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, God was actually commanding Joshua. The first sentence says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. God was asking Joshua, Joshua, follow me. See, the thing is, if we will not obey God, we will not be where he wants us to be. And if we are not where God wants us to be, it's going to be difficult for us to hear God and to experience his presence. If we will not obey God, we force our own way, we force our own wants, and unknowing, unknowingly, we can drift away from the Lord. You see, obeying God is actually a very difficult thing to do. But God is gracious, and it is worth it to follow God all the time. Why? Because God has our best interest in mind. God is all-knowing. He is the God of the universe. He even knows us more than we know ourselves. And if that is the case, we have every reason to be confident in the Lord as we obey Him. You know, Joshua could have said, "The Lord." It's been so long. We've been wandering in the desert for so many years. We quit. We're not yet in the promised land. Let's just end this. We don't want to go to the promised land anymore. And dami na na-experience ng Israelites during this time. But God was firm. And he was saying, Joshua, be strong and courageous. And let me ask us today, what has God been telling us to obey? Has God been telling us to let go of relationships or friendships that keep us away from God that are bad influences to us? Maybe there is a sin that we need to surrender to God. Maybe there is a friend we know we should share the gospel to. Or maybe it's simply in the context of our homes. We should be obeying our parents, loving our siblings, forgiving one another. You see, whatever it may be, this is the truth. That we can be certain that God is with us when we fully obey Him. When we fully align to His good and perfect will. That was what God was saying to Joshua. Joshua, you have to remember how faithful I have been throughout your life. And that's what we should also remember, how God has been so faithful throughout our life. Not only in the good things, but also in the bad things. If we would fix our perspective, if we would focus on God, Yes, we would still see and maybe experience many challenging things in our lives. But we will always remember that God is still faithful and He does not change. The second thing that we talked about a while ago is actively obeying God. We have to actively obey Him. We have to be at the center of His will so that we will experience His presence in our lives. Lastly, is we are to turn to God's word. God later on says to Joshua to keep the law. Okay? To keep the law that he gave to Moses and was passed on to Joshua. This law contained very specific instructions of how the Israelites should live so that they would be a light to the world. They can point other people to who God is. 
And God said, Joshua, you have to keep my commandments in your heart. Be careful to obey them and be careful to meditate on them. You know, in this day and age of hyper-information, if we are not careful, we can be easily swept away by the lies that would lead us further and further away from God's truth. And when our hearts and minds drift away, further and further away from God's truth, that's when we will start to be scared. That's when we will start to be afraid, discouraged. We will succumb to weakness and we will not have any kind of courage in us. This is the confidence that we have. That God's word is true. It is unchanging and it will remain forever. God's word is true. It is unchanging and God's word will remain forever. That's why we have to turn to God's word. Let me ask us again, when was the last time you just sat down, spent unhurried time reading your Bible, just letting God speak to you? Let's ask ourselves, what have we been feeding our minds? Is it the truth of God's word that's influencing us day by day? Is it the truth of God's word that's leading us moment by moment? Right? So three things that we can do to claim this promise that God will be with us wherever we will go. We have to recall God's faithfulness and trust that He is faithful just as He was before. We have to actively obey God and we are to turn to God's word. And you might be saying, you know, Kuya Luis, it's too late. I've missed my chance. I've already disobeyed God. Kuya Luis, I don't even open my Bible anymore. Okay, Luis, I have actually never read the Bible. I have never opened it. I don't think I have a relationship with God. I don't think God listens to me. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not true. Your chance is not yet over. It has not yet passed. And if you are here with us tonight, now is the time to go to God and humble ourselves before Him. If you're feeling afraid, if you're feeling discouraged, and you can't seem to comprehend, Lord, how will I obey that command to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. You can simply start with this. Just go to God and humble ourselves before Him. You know, if we put our faith in Him, we follow His commands, we treasure His word in our heart, so much so that it impacts our lives, our actions, and our words. We will be certain that He will be with us wherever we, we will go, no matter how uncertain these days may be. Just as He was with Joshua, he will be with us if we put our faith in Him. So I want to encourage us all again with this verse. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. We really want to claim this promise in our life. We simply just go to God, surrender ourselves to Him, obey Him, and trust His faithfulness. Thank you for listening, guys. All right. So praise God for that devotion from Kuyo Luis. You know, I was reminded of how constant God is in our lives. You know, even in the times that we don't even approach Him, even in the times that we don't even think about God, He's just always there waiting for us to come back to Him. And I like the challenge from Kuyo Luis in the last part that he said, it's never too late. Hindi pa huli ang lahat para pumunta sa Panginoon. No? Hindi pa huli ang lahat para basahin yung word ni God. It's not too late to start a relationship with Him. And maybe tonight is the night that God is calling you back into His loving arms if you have been straying away from Him. Maybe tonight is the night that you can reconnect with God. So we encourage you guys, we're going to be starting our time of prayer. So I will be praying for you guys. I'll be reading your comments and praying for you, lifting you up to the Lord. So feel free to chat here in the Zoom your prayer requests. Feel free also to comment on Facebook, on YouTube, so we can pray together. So let's all have this time of prayer and lift up your concerns to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your timeless word. Thank you, Lord, that even in a world that is rampant with uncertainty, with insecurity, with so much pain and heartbreak, we can be assured that in you, in your presence, 
we have peace, we have joy that can never be taken away. We have peace that transcends other circumstances, God. Peace that overcomes even the most negative or most difficult of circumstances. So I pray, Lord God, help us to claim that promise of peace tonight, Lord God. If we need to repent of a sin or let go of a certain sin or a certain struggle, may tonight be the night that we choose to surrender these to you. And I come before you, Lord, lifting up to you the prayers of my brothers, my sisters who are joining us tonight. We pray, Lord God, for JC and his prayer for the COVID situation to start ending, Lord God. We pray for your for your hand upon all the frontliners, those who are still battling in the hospitals, Lord God. I pray may you heal all of those who are infected with the COVID virus according to your perfect time and perfect will. I pray may you strengthen all the frontliners who are already getting so burnt out, getting so tired treating all the people in the hospitals. I pray, Lord, may you be their source of peace, source of joy, source of encouragement. I pray, Lord God, for the Lolo and driver of JC who are positive with COVID. May you heal them according to your time. I pray also for Marielle and her mental health right now and for all the young people, all the people who are streaming right now who may be going through a difficult time with their mental health, who may be having a, a difficult time coping with what's happening around them those who are lonely, those who are anxious, those who are depressed. I pray, Lord God, may your presence be a comfort to them. I pray, Lord God, may your peace that transcends all understanding be with them, O oh God. I pray, Lord, that you always remind them of your promises that are true and that are reliable. I pray, Lord God, for JP, for wisdom and guidance in handling his discipleship group tomorrow and for all the d-group leaders out there i lift them all up to you i pray lord that you help us to not give up on sharing you to others even when it's discouraging even when people reject you i pray may we never get tired of sharing the gospel of meeting the disciples you have entrusted to us i pray for danica may you help her to uh, learn how to be humble i pray lord god for uh, Marcy, for her family, whatever they are going through right now, may you grant them provision, may you grant them blessing, may you also grant them uh, protection from any attacks of the evil one, protection from any sicknesses, even protection from any unnecessary fights in their family. I pray may you always unite them. May your love and grace abound. I pray, Lord God, for all the families represented here those who are going through difficulties in their families, those who have troubles in the families, their parents are about to separate or they're having financial struggles. I, I pray, Lord God, yung mga damaged relationships, yung mga broken relationships, I pray for restoration and reconciliation to happen in their families. I pray, Lord God, yung mga kailangan humingi ng sorry or humingi ng tawad. I pray, Lord God, those who need to say sorry that they will humble themselves to the person that they have hurt. I pray, Lord God, may all the families represented here just have healthy relationships, loving relationships, grace-filled relationships. I pray may you bless all the households here. I pray, Lord God, for Karen, for wisdom and courage to stop being with the bad influences. We know, Lord God, there's so many influences in the world and you have given us the freedom to choose what will influence us or who will influence us. So I pray, Lord God, may we choose the right influence, the godly influence. I pray, Lord God, for Karen and all those people who are struggling with bad influences. I pray may you surround them with good influences, with godly people, people who will help them grow in, in their walk with you, people who will help them grow in life. Lord God, people who will not pull them down, people who will not discourage them, people who will even share the truth to them, even if the truth hurts. I pray, Lord God, that you surround all of us with good influences. I also pray for Stephanie Milana, praying, Lord, for her mom's healing from whatever sickness she is going through. We pray, oh God, 
that you heal her according to your perfect time and perfect will. We pray for protection for her family as well. We're lifting up to you also si Jamil for her daughter Annika who's having colds, coughs, and high fever right now. Lord, for all of those who are sick right now, for all of those who are really battling any kind of sickness, whether it's physical, it's mental, maybe an emotional sickness, we just pray for your hand of healing to be upon them. I pray as they go through this battle, this struggle, this difficult season in their life, I pray, Lord, may they stay faithful to you. I pray, Lord, na kumapit lang sila sa'yo, hindi sila bibitaw sa'yo. I pray, Lord God, that they will choose to trust that you are sovereign, you are in control. I pray, Lord God, for wisdom for all the doctors, for the nurses they are seeing. May you use even yung mga gamot na tinitake nila para maging channel to ng healing mo sa kanila. I pray, Lord God, for all of the students right now who are going through a difficult time in their online classes. Yung mga burnt out na, yung mga pagod na, yung mga litong-lito na. We just pray, Lord God, for you to grant them wisdom, grant them guidance, grant them patience and perseverance also. Pray for all the teachers, the professors, yung mga nalilito na rin kung paano ba nila iraraos yung mga online classes nila. We just pray, Lord, for your intervention. If it's your will, Lord God, um, magka-face-to-face classes na rin one day, I pray, Lord, that you will allow it to be launched safely. Yung mga mapoprotektahan yung mga students and yung mga teachers from any virus, Lord God. I pray, Lord, for si Camille, uh, for her lawless healing. I pray also for Joy, for her depression and heartache, heartache that she feels right now. I grant all of them peace, comfort, Lord God. And Lord, there are just so many prayers. You know the prayers of all the people who are streaming right now. You know the cries of their hearts. You know the happenings, the details in their lives, Lord God. And you are involved in every single detail of their lives. So I pray, Lord, na hindi sila bibitaw sa'yo. Kakapit lang sila ng kakapit sa'yo. Lalapit lang sila ng lalapit sa'yo. They will turn to your word. They will remind themselves of who you are, what you've done, and what you will still do. I pray, Lord God, that all of our hopes may not be rooted or pinned in this temporal world, Lord God, but we may fix our hearts, fix our eyes, fix our minds to you and to eternity with you in heaven. This is not our final destination, Lord. May you always remind us of that. This is not our end game, this earth. But I pray, Lord, may you prepare us to be with you in heaven one day when you return or when you call us back home. Thank you, God, for this time to just breathe out, to pour out our hearts to you. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you once again for joining us in Time Out Thursdays. If you want someone to talk to, to pray for you, if you have any questions, you can always chat with us any day of the week in Elevate Mains. Facebook page. There will be Ates and Kuyas who'd love to talk to you, who'd love to pray for you, who'd love to cancel, counsel you. So there are, there's the link here uh, flashed on the screen. So m.me slash elevate main. See you there in the chat. Also, we have our Move 2021 coming up on October 28 to 30. Tickets are just 500 pesos and this is so exciting guys. It's been long awaited. Dapat 2020 pa to, pero finally it's gonna happen at this 2021, October 28 to 30. We'll be joined by renowned speakers, both local and international. So grab your tickets now. For more information, you can visit the MOVE Youth Discipleship Conference Facebook page and their website. Also, we're inviting you to the online youth service this coming Saturday. So two days from now on 3 p.m. for our, our for our installment, our next installment of Life Detox series. We'll be talking about how to conquer anger. Yeah. So sa mga madaling magalit, you know, yung gagalit mo ko eh. Di ba? Yung mga ganyan para sa inyo yung message this coming Saturday. And once again, if you want to be prayed for, you can stay here in the Zoom. Or for those of you who are still on Facebook and YouTube, you can hop in here in the Zoom room. The links or the meeting details are posted in the or in the Facebook stream, in the YouTube stream, and in the comment section. You can join us here in the Zoom. We'll be assigning you to breakout rooms where we can pray for you one-on-one. All right. So once again, this has been your Kuya Tij, your campus missionary from UPD. And this has been another Time Out Thursdays, your weekly dose of promises. We hope to see you again next week. God bless.